So in this episode, I'll be teaching you how to make pure iodine crystals using distilled water, hydrochloric acid, and hydrogen peroxide. And for our ingredient that actually includes iodine, potassium iodide crystals, which are actually used to treat radiation sickness in some cases. So it's actually pretty expensive right now due to fears of a nuclear war, which is fun, I guess. So the way we start is we start off with weighing the amount of potassium iodide. And this is all based off a formula that I will put on the screen now, and I will go into more detail on how that works later in the episode after we actually make iodine. So get your scale, go ahead and zero it. Mine automatically zeroes uh, when I put something on first. And go ahead and I'm going to do about one gram of potassium iodide. And this should yield not a whole lot, actually, of iodine. Only about 0.7 grams based on the formula. Yeah, that's good enough. Just based on their molecular weights, it's just not going to produce a lot of iodine. Now that that's done, we will go ahead and add the hydrogen peroxide in here. Now, the reason why I'm doing hydrogen peroxide in here is just I don't have a lot of it in this bottle and not a lot of it's needed. So, only about two milliliters. Actually, no, one milliliter is needed for this. This the bottle doesn't have a whole lot left. I have another gallon in the drawer, but you know, I know that's definitely over the amount, but I'll just measure that when I pour it in. And this isn't a very specific thing. You don't need to have like super accurate amounts for all of this. So you don't need to worry too well. Okay, so once you have that, oh, by the way, I forgot to say this is about 12 molar hydrochloric acid. You can go ahead and start mixing it all together. So I'm just going to get the scale out of the way. I don't need that anymore. So you go ahead and add the water first. So we'll need about two mils of water. So I'm actually going to use a pipette for this part. Okay, so I'm actually going to use a pipette for this, just there's not a whole lot needed, and I kind of want to control the amount that's in here. So I know using a pipette might seem very obvious, but actually not a whole lot of people know. You kind of have to be taught how to use it. So you actually go to the top first, bottom of the meniscus, and then go ahead and drop down to two mils, which is what we need. I'm actually going to put a little bit more just because I usually do, just to control it. It's water, it's not going to hurt the reaction. And then go ahead and empty it out. Okay, I'm now going to shake this around a little bit to kind of get it all dissolved. This just helps the reaction kind of process through so it's not in big clumps, so it's evenly distributed. Okay, there you go. Now I can go ahead and add the hydrochloric acid. Now be careful with this stuff not pretty stuff. I know that I'm using the same pipette as before. It doesn't really matter in this case. And I'm going to use it wrong as well because, well, I don't want to waste hydrochloric acid. <laughs> so we need about how many? Two mils of hydrochloric acid. So we're at three right now, so we should go down to about one. There I go, spilling hydrochloric acid on my table. There we go. And put the rest back in. That's what's going to be thrown away. Okay. And just clean up a little bit. Don't want to leave concentrated hydrochloric acid. So again, go ahead and stir it. Start to see a little bit of color change. But the real color change comes when you add the hydrogen peroxide. So be careful with this. Make sure to add it slowly because it's going to get very hot especially if you build this up more and more. So I'm just going to move the camera down here and we will add about one milliliter of hydrogen peroxide. Instantly there you can see the color change as iodine is produced and you can even start it seeing a few more already. So I added probably the whole mill all at once, which is the exact opposite of what you should do. So I'm just going to go ahead and cover this with that for now. And, uh, yeah, so now we just kind of wait for the gas to slow down and for it to cool down, and then we will start to filter. 
Okay, so once it's cooled down, you can go ahead and take this off. Be careful with that, because it has iodine. Iodine is poisonous. Do not do this unless you know what you're doing. Okay, so go ahead and put that in there, and then slowly pour. And make sure to do this with gloves. You do not want to get this stuff on your hands. It'll stain you for weeks, if not months. Okay, now you can see you have chunks of iodine in there, which is not fun. And you can see it spewing out towards the camera, which is fun. So what I'm going to do is just pour water in there, allow it to not dissolve, but just precipitate into it a little bit. And then you can go ahead and pour it in. And you just kind of keep doing this, allowing it to filter out onto that paper. And you'll be left with clumps in here left, and that is okay, as we'll get to the next step. So um, I'm just trying to get most of the other liquid out, which the other liquid, if I remember correctly, is potassium chloride. I look at it as I say, if I remember correctly, like I'm remembering it. Okay, now we just wait for it to filter. Okay, and once it is done filtering, as you can see here, pretty much done if my camera will focus. Now, what's left in there isn't really worth getting. When you do bigger batches, it's definitely worth collecting that, but with this amount, the vast majority that you'll see will be in the beaker still that you can see down there. So you can go ahead, pour the orange liquid out of there, uh, throw the filter paper away, and then we'll get to the next step. Once you have the beaker back, you can go ahead and you can go ahead and grab a glass rod. So I have these special glass rods that have the tip on them, so you can see that there. But you basically just scrape this in and actually pour that liquid out into the water, which is fine. But this will show you how staining iodine is, how quickly it stains that water. As you can see, like that already. And I poured some on my desk as soon as I was talking about how staining it is. So yeah, that's another thing about iodine. Very staining and very dangerous. So you shouldn't have to do this in a well-ventilated area away from anything that you don't want to get stained pretty much. I actually stained my wireless charger. It was white, now it's like an orange color. I'll show you that in a second once I'm done with this. So yeah, that's pretty much good. You know. Now you just put that off to the side and you have a beaker filled with iodine sludge. So that's not pure iodine yet. You weigh it, you'll have more than what you're supposed to have. So, now what you do is you grab a heating plate. You grab your heating plate, go ahead, put it on there, and then you fill this with cold water, which I will do in a second. Once you have it filled with cold water, go ahead and put the round bottom beaker on top, and then crank up the heat. High as you want to go, pretty much. This hot plate can go up pretty high, so I'm not going to turn it up too, too high. So just about there should be good. And then you pretty much just wait. In the meantime, I'll show you what happened to my charger. So uh, I was doing iodine in here, and the iodine fumes kind of went over. If I can get it over here, I'll just move this. The iodine fumes kind of went over, and you can see how yellow it's turned. This used to be white, as white as this. So yeah. Iodine's dangerous stuff. Don't do this at home if you don't know what you're doing. Then you just kind of wait for a while, and what'll happen is the iodine will melt and then boil off. So it's not actually sublimating. It will melt. At room temperature, it does sublimate, but you, can, you can't see it yet, but it will melt slightly. So you just go ahead, heat it up, and wait for it to re-solidify, and we'll be back then. Here you can actually see it starting to boil, actually. If you zoom in there, you can see it's melting and boiling. 
And that's also the water coming off as well. You can see there in all the extra products that we were trying to get off with just filtering, but you can't get everything off that way. It's just not possible with stuff like this. Okay, and now that all, as you can see, all the stuff on the bottom is pretty much gone, you can go ahead and turn off the heat and allow it to cool down. Once the iodine is completely cool and dried off now, you can start to scrape what's left of the iodine on the beaker out onto a filter paper. So that's still a little bit wet because I didn't do it properly, but if you take the iodine, just scrape it off the beaker, you can see you have nice crystals. Again, make sure to wear gloves with this because if you don't, you'll be having a very bad day. Once you're satisfied with what you've got, you can also get some of this off the end of the beaker as well. You can see a big chunk came off right there. So that's pure iodine. So as you can see it's already stained my gloves. If you weren't wearing gloves, like I said, bad day. So now you take an amber bottle, and I have one that already has iodine in it, and a funnel, which I have in a cabinet. Actually I need a smaller funnel for this. And then go ahead and start pouring your iodine in there. Now I'm just going to break this up. Usually it doesn't come out this way. This is the first I've actually seen it come out like that. But you take the filter paper and very, very carefully start pouring it in. And then there's your iodine. Obviously this is a lot more. I had stuff in it previously, but stored in a bottle because it protects it from UV rays. Here's how that whole reaction actually works. So on the reactant side, you have our hydrochloric acid, potassium iodide, and hydrogen peroxide. If you're wondering where the water is, it's here. It's just because the potassium iodide is dissolved in the water. It's not actually part of the reaction. It's just to allow the reaction to actually happen quicker and more efficiently. So what's actually happening is you have the hydrochloric acid, and potassium iodide, and they're combining together to form potassium chloride and pure iodine. And then the extra hydrogen from the hydrochloric acid is combining with the hydrogen peroxide to form two H2O molecules. And that's pretty much how the reaction works. Now, this is a very simplified version of this reaction, and that's why you don't see it reacting right away before we poured in the hydrogen peroxide. So in our next video, we're actually going to use the iodine to create an explosive that's called nitrogen triiodide, also known as clutch powder. It's a very fun and very pretty explosive. It's so sensitive that if you touch it with anything, it explodes instantly. So it's really fun, and that's what we'll be going over next. So stay tuned for that video.